What happens when you dig straight down in Minecraft? We have always been told to never do it, but why? And what are the chances of being rewarded for the risk taken? Hello and welcome as I answer this question that no one asked. Quickly before we start however, do be sure to hit that subscribe button because I will most likely be making a second part to this when I have the resources available and also some very similar videos to this. Firstly I'd like to say that this video was inspired by a memory of a time back in the days of Pocket Edition when caves didn't exist and the dangers unheard of. I would often dig straight down to get my resources such as iron or coal but that game has since changed and now nobody would do this anymore. Before starting this video I decided to check out if anybody had done this before and it doesn't look like it... Oh wait. Looks like it's been done before, let's back up and go. Okay so on further inspection it looks like Mumbo here hasn't actually done exactly what I am looking for, so I should still investigate it for myself. He said himself that his sample size wasn't very big and that he was only doing this by himself. Now just as a quick note on the sample size, I am just one man and this actually took slightly longer than I expected. If I had more time or I was more than one man then obviously I would have done a larger sample but with 100 readings taken I can say with 95% confidence that if you were to do this test yourself your readings would come out within plus or minus 10% of my readings. Now I'm doing it by myself as well so this might take a little while. Now the easiest way to do this would be to just hop into your random Minecraft world and dig straight down and see what happens. Uh, this will take a while. Okay, so we can't just dig straight down, or in order to get a large enough sample size it would take over a month or even years if I was to really try get a large sample, which is what I'm here for. It would simply take far too long to get the samples required to have good test data. So we must do something outside of the game, and I think making a program that can do it for me will probably be the fastest way. Okay, so first we're going to need a way to read Minecraft save files, which are in the Minecraft Anvil format, the .mca file type, by 256 by, two, by 512 blocks or 32 by 32 chunks, for a total of 67,108,864 blocks. That's a lot. These files are encrypted in such a way that you can't just read them. So first I will need a way to decrypt them. Luckily after about a week of searching I was pointed in the direction of this thing of VT over on GitHub. I'll have this linked in the description. This is some Python code which I can't be bothered to see how it works, but the point is it does. This allows for me to pass the files into something I can more easily understand. At the time of writing the script the module isn't in full release yet, however everything that I was originally looking for is now available and I was easily able to download it with pip. Ok so let's see if it works. Perfect. Alright, so it seems fairly easy to work with. Now, before I start collecting large amounts of data, I should at least try to get most of my part of the code working, which is what I'll now spend ungodly hours on. Okay, so what I have here is something to combine all of the data into one large file to make it easier to work with. So let's do a test run. Okay, that took way too long to do, and it was only one region and didn't even finish properly. To be honest, I'm not sure where exactly in the process it went wrong, but we can see that this isn't going to work. Even if it was to work, I want to take about a thousand worlds, maybe more, with four regions per world, and if I were to do this for all of them, it would take um, about three months to process them all, when I don't even need to do it. So what I've just learned here is to just read directly off the save file and make the code more complex rather than whatever I was trying to do. Let's try this again. Alright, so I've tried to use parallelization and GPU acceleration. Ugh. After some messing around here, I finally got to something which is relatively fast, and by that I mean it would take just over 500 hours to complete. However, I can also run multiple instances of Python here, I'm aiming for around 8, and with that I would reduce that total time by 8 times, which overall should only take about 5.5 days where the code runs for 12 hours, but I still have a bit of complexity to add to this, so we'll have to see where it ends up. Okay, I have absolutely no idea how much time has passed, but I started this in October and it's almost Christmas now, which was the deadline by which I wanted this done for. I have 8 days maximum to do this, and although all my code is now working, the fastest time in which I can feasibly do this without running my PC 24-7 is in almost 10 days. So I'm going to run my code 24-7 running without using my PC for anything else for the next 5 days, and then try to write another piece of code on the 6th day to analyze everything and get the video actually done. Let's go.
Unfortunately, I was too lazy to wait all this time running my PC, so I cut this short and only got 256 worlds, which is a quarter of what I originally wanted. Furthermore, I realized that the way the counting system works is completely broken in the way I intended it to work. See, say there were two coal ores next to each other horizontally. What I would have wanted it to do is only count one if dug straight down onto one of them, but instead the program also counts that any time there is also an adjacent block to the x and z coordinate at which I am digging down at. So I'm changing the rules slightly. Instead of seeing what the chances are of uncovering a specific block, I am seeing what the chances are of digging straight down onto a block is, which will be completely different from the original question, but this is the data I've got and well I can't do anything about it now, because I'm not waiting another 60 hours. Nevertheless, I have written something to quickly add up all the values, and here are the results some of which I found quite surprising. I bet you expected me to present all of my findings in a really shiny way. No, dead wrong. Instead, here I have an Excel sheet. So, the chances of you digging straight down onto coal is 69.89%, which is a lot higher than I expected considering that this is digging straight down onto it. For iron, it goes down to 39.45%. For lapis, it is a tiny 1.61%. For redstone, it's quite a bit bigger, uh, of 11.52%. Gold is smaller than that, 4.29%. Diamond is quite rare, so it's only 1.41%. Emerald is even more rare, so it's 0.16% of you digging straight down onto it. I'm pretty sure emerald only spawns in one block clusters, so the chances of uncovering emerald is in fact going to be five times bigger than that. Now what surprised me was that Mumbo's data showed that chances of falling into lava are only 8%, but my data shows it's 34.54%. Now I'm not sure if that's an error on my side or his side, um, so it's probably somewhere in the middle, but it's definitely higher than 8%. And then the chances of digging straight down onto a chest are so low that Excel just automatically formats it to 0.01%, but the real number is 0.00685%. That is pretty low, but chests are rare, and usually filled with pretty bad loot. Now, going over here to the blocks fallen, this part of the Excel sheet shows number of blocks fallen, and, and this column here shows the count for each time you fell that number of blocks. And here is the cumulative count. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to work out the percentages here, so I did what I could. Um, I worked out that the total chance of you falling at all is 17.61%. Mumbo's statistics showed a was 17% chance to fall into a cave specifically. However, my statistics show it's 17.61% of falling anywhere at all. That includes falling through trees when you dig down the leaves, falling through cliffs when there's an overhang, for the other statistics here, what I'm pretty sure I've worked out is there's an 8.72% chance that you'll fall further than 3 blocks, which would do damage to you, and you'd there's an 18% chance you will fall further than 23 blocks, which is the limit of how far you can fall without armor and it surviving it. I'm not bothered to figure out the rest of the statistics for falling, so here they all are, and you can work this out for yourself, if you really care. The furthest block fallen was 153 blocks, which I'm pretty sure was from a cliff into a ravine, because I cannot imagine such a great distance. Second tallest was 137, and then the others are close by as well. So, I think that was quite interesting. We learned quite a bit here. I, for one, is surprised that you can fall that far in Minecraft. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, then be sure to leave a like. It will help me a lot. And if you want to see other videos like this where I get better results next time, and also where I find what the best height is for different ores, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss those out. Um, they'll, they'll surely be coming at some point. But for now, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.